integral healing involves a uh, number of things. It means basically we have to re-establish the balance. So there are two ways of looking at it. One is that finally it is the grace that cures. This we must remember. But then it is very difficult for a human being in his totality to have this kind of a unflinching faith in grace. So what we need is we need some kind of support. Not that it is necessary. One has to see for oneself. So what is the support? Sometimes the doctor comes as support. Old time doctors, when so many diseases were not known, they came, held your hand, touched your hair and said, you will be all right. And you got all right. What did he give you? Pink mixture with six little matras or a green mixture and you were all right. APC powder and you were all right. Now modern doctors, yes, stay there. Go for this corona test first, then you come to me. That's how life has become. It's not anybody's fault. Life is organized like that. So doctors no more carry that kind of instrumentality. Now it has been transferred to medicine. So it's not the doctor. Earlier the doctor, medicines were very few. Even when I graduated, there was one antibiotic only, doxycycline, uh, ledermycin, tetracycline. Later on ampicillin came. It was regarded as, oh my God, don't use it on everybody. Huh? People, bacteria will get resistant. Now you have all kinds of antibiotics. So there is a transfer of power from the doctor to the medicine. So now people depend on the medicine. This medicine, that medicine, you must be seeing corona protocol, uh, whether to use ivermectin or not, with this medicine or that medicine. And people are so dependent, uh, they want to know. Somebody has already given them medicine, they want to confirm from another doctor, is this medicine alright? Will it help? Will it not help? Then after some time, the cycle is turning in another way. Medicine means all medicines. Homeopathy, allopathy, something which is external. Why? Because it gives you the faith that you will be alright. Now medical research is turning full circle. So what is the full circle? They are saying, no, no, actually, you know, the problem is with your immunity and your genes. Now where are genes? <laughs> within you. Where is immunity? Within you. So now it is turning towards whether it be tumors or whether it be inflammatory problems, whether it be infections. Largely we are going back to the immune system. Immune system is heavily dependent upon our thoughts, attitudes, etc., so the integral healing means that we can take something outwardly, but we should know that it is not this cures. The state of mind in which I am in is very important. Whether I am open to higher things or not is important. Faith is, has a big factor in healing. Will to be. There are people who have nurtured a will to die in their life. And when they fall ill, they have a tendency to succumb. So will to live. So when will the will to live come? When we have to look forward to something. So always, you know, again, the aim of life helps. So will to be, faith. Then there are things which create beautiful conditions for healing, which is one of them is peace, quietude. So that's why it's advised that when you are not well, uh, half a day, just stay in quietude. It's very good for healing. But of course, if we have never practiced peace and quietude, Half a day will be miserable because, you know, we are not accustomed to peace and quietude. We will be more disturbed. So, peace, quietude, faith, these are healing forces, just drawing upon forces of harmony, imagining light coming from above and healing, cleansing. Imagination is a wonderful power we don't use because we say whatever you are imagining is unreal. As if this world is the only real thing because our senses should. Just because it's a collective uh, trap so we think it is real but the senses have organized we all experience the same way because nature is organized to another sense the world will appear very different to a divine sense to a spiritual sense it will appear very different than what we see but we think it is real imagination is unreal on the contrary there are things to which we are glued and tied with this by the senses and the nature has evolved us in such a way that we give a form and in the form the mind fills it meanings. It brings in all kinds of intents which may not be there at all. And all this we call as a human being and we judge. But what is happening really? We don't know truth. So because of this trap, this prison of the senses, we are deprived of many things which are there, which 
we don't have access to. So one of the ways is by the power of imagery. Imagery, image, imagination. They all come from that. So what is a very good imagery is, Shabindu says, there is an ocean of light and peace above your head. So a typical hardcore rationalist caught up in the senses will say, but I don't see any ocean. But there are things which we may not immediately see. Start with this faith. When a doctor says there is coronavirus, we can ask, have you seen it? Somebody has seen it in some lab and you have faith in that scientist. But you don't have faith in another kind of scientist who says it's a vibration. Shubhinda says it's a vibration with some kind of a bad will and a suggestion. That's what illnesses are. So bad will, it is a cause of illness. So good will cures. Keep people around you who will tell you that you will be fine. Stay away from people who will, the moment they see you ill and they will say, Oh my God, you have, you know, I cannot forget a sight in my life as a child. I had hematuria because of, you know, blood in the urine because of stone. So urine, he said, get a urine sample and show to the doctor. First impression of the, Oh my God, there is so much blood. No, no, you take him to Kolkata. I was in a village. I cannot forget that sight. The kind of expression that he gave was that death sentence has been written on me. <laughs> so my father had the usual formula. He came home with tears. He kept me in front of Ramji. Said, take care of this child. You have given, I still remember his prayer. You have given this child to me, you take care. And I remembered it helped. Everything was cured. Nothing was required. So, this is a kind of way of life. So, doctor is living in a world of physical reality. My dad is living in a world of spiritual reality. Ramji was real to him. And hence, Ramji comes and cures. If somebody asks, but where is Ramji? It's only a murti. This is the problem of modern mind. That it has lost touch with realities which were accessible to a uh, early humanity. Now, all right, we have gone into this curve. We have to go further and reclaim those reality in a big way. So, to become conscious of the divine presence, to become conscious that there is, in fact, if Sharbindo says there is an ocean of light and peace, he knows about it. So, what do we do? We just sit quietly and say, peace, peace, light, peace, light, light, peace. Do it for one month, two months. After that, you will see, you will have an excess like this. Initially, you will not find anything. And you have to, there is a way of calling, you know, you are calling peace. So don't say, peace come, peace come. So peace will say, what are you doing, man? So say, peace, 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 peace in the mind, peace in the thoughts, peace in the eyes, peace in the sight, peace in the ears, peace in the hearing, peace in the throat, peace in the voice. Peace in the heart, peace in the lungs, peace in the breath, peace in the heartbeat, peace in the abdomen, peace in the limbs. Very hurriedly, but see, just call the word peace, peace, peace. After some time, you will see that whenever there is any such challenge, you don't have to call much. Peace will become a very good friend. Even if you have a person called Shanti in your neighborhood, you call Shanti, this peace will come. <laughs> because he is closer. And keep some, such names of children. We keep such complicated names. Keep names, you are peace. <laughs> House, give names everywhere you see peace. Right outside the bathroom. <laughs> Put a little message. Peace unto those who enter here. <laughs> see, let See, you must have seen, when you enter the ashram, you see, it's written silence. So, it's a very powerful thing, you know. So, I, whenever I used to work in the center, so we had taken the same thing and put it there. And when people are disturbing, just point out toward that. It has an impact. So, this, this message should come from every side. Your life should be so much filled with peace that you can have a pact with your partner, husband, wife or whoever... And say, before we fight, we'll say peace three times. <laughs> Every five minutes, the other person will remind peace. <laughs> so peace, 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 light. Peace is tremendously healing. Just because he is readily available, so you don't value. 
you have to pay some money go to a doctor who will give you a formula and some complicated mantra ah this mantra will heal me this is how we are because we don't believe that things can be free thus see that's what recently i was reading that a person who came out of the corona said i am so surprised that uh, god gave oxygen and everything free but here uh, ventilator they charge me so much money it is same air which is being pumped the machine is charging money so some of the best things in life the divine has abundantly given us everything for our health everything that is needed to lead a beautiful life but we as human beings have spoiled it by the mind by the greed by the vital by fancies if we can remember that life can be simple beautiful as the mother says with which we can stop life can be very simple beautiful grand if we turn our thoughts to the divine grace and know that its power is beyond any limits so to turn to the grace rather than to the difficulties another very interesting thing with regard to the illness because of paucity of time i am not going into number of examples but if we stress on the difficulty the difficulty tends to increase whatever you give attention to that will increase is the law of life say every day that i am not well and you will see that sixth day you will be not well say every day that i am healthy i am well i am well all is well and you see that after some time life will be well it will be so beautiful so every day to only let our thoughts instead of oh i have an illness i have an illness no it's okay illness is fine now illness has given you an opportunity if you are in room divert your mind to anything watch some nice programs do something which you have always wanted to do don't let the mind be focused on illness and if we start leading life like this it's very simple you don't have to spend money life becomes beautiful simple grand wonderful joyous happy march towards the infinite <laughs>